Dr. Paul Mason, artificial sweeteners, lots of problems with all of them. So artificial sweeteners, so if we have a look at the, the polyol class, the sugar alcohol, so the first thing that a lot of people recognize is polyol. I've heard that somewhere before, and that's a P in FODMAPs. So you've heard about this fermentable oligosaccharide, disaccharide, monosaccharide, and polyol. These are things that are associated with irritable bowel syndrome. FODMAP, fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols, short chain carbohydrates that the small intestine absorbs poorly, can cause cramping, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, and gas. Um, so basically, you have this artificial sweetener, which is technically called sugar alcohol, and it gives you the sweet taste in your tongue, nice, but it's non-caloric, so it doesn't really get absorbed by the body. So it passes down to the intestines. So then what? So the bacteria will ferment it instead. What do bacteria do when they ferment it? They produce they gas, gas. And get bloated. And if they don't, if it doesn't, before it gets fermented, it has an osmotic effect, so it draws fluid. So you end up with bloating and diarrhea. And that's why, if you have a look at the packet on uh, diabetic lollies or chewing gum or anything with artificial sweeteners, you'll see the warning, warning, excess consumption may have a laxative effect. So certainly uh, if you're having any gastrointestinal issues, then you should be staying away from artificial sweeteners like the sugar alcohols. And the, as a rule of thumb, if it ends in ol, so sorbitol, you know, xylitol, mannitol, they're, they're all sugar alcohols. Right, but what about say stevia? Is that, uh, is that uh, something that uh, they, you recommend? Uh, look, the other problem with artificial sweeteners is addictive eating behaviors. So they, they stimulate the mesolimbic, the mesolimbic pathway. And basically this is the pathway that rewards us for, uh, you know, we do something, we get this release of dopamine, we feel good, and it makes us want to repeat that behavior. The problem with artificial sweeteners is that they lead to an activation of this, this pathway as well. So if there's an, an eating behavior that you're trying to break, um, be it trying to get a, overcome an addiction to sweet foods, then the continued consumption of even artificial sweeteners is going to be contributing to that. Artificial sweeteners or polyols and sugar alcohols are the P in FODMAPs and are associated with irritable bowel syndrome. FODMAP fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols, short chain carbohydrates that the small intestine absorbs poorly, can cause cramping, diarrhea, constipation, bloating, and gas. A polyol, artificial sweetener, gives a sweet taste on the tongue, but is non-caloric, so doesn't get absorbed by the body. It's passed down to the intestines where the bacteria ferment it, causing gas. It withdraws fluid, so you end up with bloating and diarrhea. Foods that have artificial sweeteners often have the label, may have a laxative effect. If having gastrointestinal issues, stay away from artificial sweeteners. If it ends in OL, such as Zorbitol, Xylitol, Manitol, it is a artificial sweetener. What about Stevia? The other problem with artificial sweeteners is the addictive eating behaviors. They stimulate the mesolimbic pathway. This rewards us with a dopamine release. It makes us want to repeat that action. So it makes stopping an eating habit much harder. Annotated, summarized, easy to share with loved ones.